Parental discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling Mayhem Show 316. That's right, Stone Cold Appreciation Night. We've been waiting 315 episodes for this. What? And, what? and tonight is the night. What? What? That we what? pay tribute. What? 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 To the baddest man in the WWE. What? What? The what? beer drinking. What? 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 Ass kicking. What? Son what? of a bitch. What? what? Stone Cold what? Steve Austin. What? 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 Okay, we can yeah. stop that now. Okay. I am uh, Mike Sorg right here at the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and we have this ragtag group of low life <laughs> with us to talk wrestling and Stone Cold Steve Austin tonight and all that going on. The other guy over there on the couch in the studio is Chachi of Insert Coin to Begin. Also, at Chachi says on Twitter. I'm sorry. Oh, what are sorry. you reading there? Uh, I was reading Monster Haiku. Oh, really? <laughs> And also joining us is DJ Lunchbox. Holy shit, you were writing, you were reading Monster Haiku. What a coincidence. I wrote Monster Haiku. <laughs> uh, what a coincidence. Yes, folks, this is DJ Lunchbox. You can set your clocks by the TikTok time that I Rick Rock rhyme. I'm the Taco Man Salad, the Beefy Chief. I'm more than a mouthful and I can't be beat. So settle on in, DJ Sauce on the mic. The Wrestling Mayhem Show is here to save your life. There you go. Of MonsterHaiku.org, ThoughtfulRiot.com. Also joining us is the Wrestle Fan. Hello, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Funny enough, you talk about MonsterHaiku.com. I am actually on a Skype line with the person that wrote Monster Haiku. <laughs> what? Holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit. How'd you get that guy? Welcome. <laughs> excellent, excellent. From San Antonio, Texas. And also, The Riz joins us. Wait, you're talking to the author of uh, Monster Haiku? Yes. I'm actually on the same Skype line. What? Wow. Shit. How'd you get that Shit. guy? Disappeared. <laughs> I've got you all beat. Huh. I have his phone number. I, I had lunch with him Ooh, today. I actually have his phone number too. We shared a burger. No, we didn't. We shared eating burgers to get. No, no, no never mind. We saying poker face. Never mind. Hard to say Ohio Ohio I, I don't know. Uh, also joining us for the moment, at least, is Hot Wheels. He joins us in. Hey, look at that. We're trying the Google Hangout again. Yes, oh, we shit. are. Who's calling who? What's, wait, wait, wait. Wait, what's. What? What? There's a phone call. Yes. Who are you calling? Who are you calling? Oh, hold up. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I know what he's doing. He's calling that haiku. Hi, is this right uh, is this DJ Sauce in the Box, author of Monster Haiku? Haiku? Why, Why yes? It <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you should ask about uh, MonsterHaiku.org. I did in fact write that, and uh, this Friday here in uh, beautiful <laughs> Pennsylvania, we're having a gallery show. Uh, Wild Garden so you should stop on by and buy a couple books. <laughs> There you go. There you go. That was the most inventive pimp I think we've ever done on this show. Callception. Holy, Holy shit. It was a call within it was a, a call. call. Was, on both ends. Uh, also, they, they, if you got your, it, or if you're going to be getting it, there's these wonderful monster haiku pins that are all over my chesticles. Um, <laughs> Best place for them. That's right. But hey, yo, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This craziness. So you can catch more of us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com according to all the... Uh, in, including all the articles. I'm sorry. I'm I'm high on Sudafed uh, or whatever it was I took that the lady made me. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Twitter us at Mayhem Show. You can also drop us a line too. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can hit us up at 412-206-WMS-09670 and I'll tell us all your deepest, darkest secrets like Big Freaky often does on a weekly basis. Hi, Freaky. You got your voicemails. Um... But that's not for here nor there. So, like I said, it's Stone Cold Appreciation Night. What? what? Exactly. Um, what? Some people actually, uh, we, we were pointing this out because somebody reminded me last night this is episode 316. And we already got a, a few responses. 
uh, uh, 50 Matches, who's been uh, tweeting us a, a bit the last few weeks over on Twitter, at 50 Matches. Uh, he says uh, his favorite moment was when Austin drove the beer truck into Raw the Monday before WrestleMania 15. I didn't realize that was before WrestleMania 15. He says, uh, best go-home show ever. Indeed. I, I tend to agree with that. Yes, of course. So, uh um, yeah. What's that? I said buy the app. Oh, hey, yeah, and we got the app. <laughs> what the Whoa. Hell? They, 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 sorry, wheels. Yeah, go, I got the go app. to buy the app. WMS Gold over on your Android and iTunes uh, stuff right there. Um, we had a, we had a couple more over on our Facebook uh, no, no, it was just, it was just, uh, Mad Mike saying what, apparently. Um, there was also, well, that, well, there was also one from a, I, it was from the one that I posted on my, uh, Facebook page, facebook.com says Russell Fan 2000. Um, uh, one, uh, Joe Martinez replied, uh, Raw is War, San Antonio, Texas, Austin and Undertaker versus Kane and Mankind, Hell in the Cell. There are plenty of classic Austin moments, but for me to be there live and see Kane and Austin go out at the top of the cell on Raw was just great. Over on our Facebook page, uh, not the group, the actual Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, Chris G said that I would have to say anything to do with the Alliance, the skits with him and Kurt Angle were gold. And they were. They were they were hilarious back then. A different kind of Stone Cold. And that's when the yeah. what thing happened, wasn't it? Like about that time? Yep. Yep. Because, mm -hmm. I mean... Wow. So uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about Stone Cold as we go through the night here. Um, everybody wants me to send me free movies on Flixer, apparently, on Facebook. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should do a favorite Stone Cold moment uh, later on tonight. We will. We will. We so will. Uh, take uh, stay tuned for more. And if you're in the chat room, let us know your favorite Stone Cold moment and everything like that. And maybe we'll do a remember one as well. Hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, no, wait, no, no time for that. No time for that. So we had an email. We have an email. Well, actually, it was a Facebook message, and it was overlooked because we don't usually get messages on Facebook through the page. So it threw us off. I apologize, but we're gonna read it this week here because it's from. You got the, who's got the music? Who's got the song? It's Vim Mail. Vim Mail. Vim Mail. Motherfucking Vim Mail. So Vim here's what, and I'm not gonna do the action. Vim Mail. There you go. Uh, our friend from over in, over in England, I believe he's still in the London area, uh, he says, Brace yourselves, North Americans. I am angry. I oh. hope this finds you well, but I will dispense with the usual pleasantness as I deliver my thoughts on WrestleMania. What kind of fucking messages does it send when the best in your company is beaten by visitors and, in the case of Beth Phoenix, beaten by an injured entertainment hostess? Cena had to win last night and retain that credibility and real... And with the real wrestling fans. He won me over some years ago with honesty and not changing his character in the face of criticism like someone else did when presented with a negative fan reaction. Cena has not turned heel. The Rock did. Cena didn't leave. The Rock did. Uh, now, I was one of the biggest fans of The Rock. I remember being sent home from the hospital in the late 90s after one of my knee surgeries. And there was a pay-per-view that night. I think it was Rock versus Triple H, and they had me jumping around my front room, forgetting that I had major operation days before. That was the magic of wrestling. Re-injury? Um, <laughs> I forgot the situation I was in. I forgot my own difficulties and was lost in the story they were telling. This was the whole package. Good story. That fucking made sense. Well-timed. With great action and an excellent commentary, always adding the situation rather than taking away from it. Cena hasn't had the luxury of that support. He has been the figurehead during a down period in wrestling. Is he Kurt Angle or the late great Guerrero? No, but he is a perfectly good wrestler. I'd say every bit as good as The Rock was and has had to put up with an office that gives him no support. Cena has... Cena has had Edge and Orton as opponents, but he hasn't had a long, drawn-out programs with the Rock was a, that the Rock was afforded in the '90s. He is the heartbeat of the WWE, and I can understand what the wrestlers all feeling a slap in the face with the Rock winning at Mania. Let me remind you: The Rock said wrestling was the great was a great part of my life, but I've moved on. His motives didn't do well, so he tapped the audience that followed him years ago. I went to see the Scorpion King. Scorpion King because The Rock was in it. I didn't see his recent because Dwayne was in them. The Rock moved on and more power to him for doing it, but the WWE should support the man that has carried the company for the last decade and try to elevate him 
to that legendary status by giving him the important wins that would elevate him to that level. Breathe, Vim. It's only wrestling. And another thing! It's all caps. Having your world title over in three seconds and not allow these guys to compete makes your world title worthless. Or should I, should I say, more worthless. There is a way to save this, but I am too angry to type it to you. The massive... <laughs> A massive positive that was Undertaker Triple H match, spectacular drama, and shows that when they they want to put WWE can put on matches uh, that make sense. I'm, apo- I'm I apologize, my allergies are insane. Uh, have spectacular action and feel important. The same goes to CM Punk and Jericho. As WWE is a written show, there are no there is no fucking excuse for it to not all be this good. I feel better for venting. I do hope you are all well. I've had. I've got yet more exams coming, so I'll be in touch with more wisdom, more insight, more sexiness that only I, from this, the correct side of the Atlantic, can deliver. I leave you with questions. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot about this part. Okay, first question from Vim. Which living former WWE star currently not in the company would you like to return? Not Brock Lesnar. Not Brock Lesnar. Nope. LB? That would not have been my first choice. No, sir. <laughs> I think it's pretty well. That, you know, legit. Like, if he wasn't injured and everything, Stone Cold. I mean, that's right. Like, like, not because it's appreciation. I seriously, I would like to see him come back for mm-hmm. real one more match. I'm kind of excited at the prospect of maybe him and Punk. You know, it would be Shane Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon. Oh yes. Shane yeah. Oh Mac. I think. All right. Look up my pants, Shane O'Mac. I'd like to see that. <laughs> El, uh, Chachi, you, you were saying uh, it would it would be the true test to what we've been saying with the whole uh, rock being back thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you wanted to see what the Attitude Era would be like in this day and age, I think the person that you would have to bring back to see if it could be a full angle is Stone Cold. So another, you think another Stone Cold rock thing happening would be the way to do it? No, not rock. Oh, just, the, just the, as, as the other piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And Triple H is still around. Right. He never left. So yeah, but wait he adapted. Second. Wait a second. He hmm. was here. He adapted. What's up, buddy? I, I I just realized that I said Shane McMahon. No, because you said still living. Uh, <laughs> I I would love to see. Um, well, no, I was gonna say Bret Hart, but I guess th- he didn't mention the caveat if they w- could come back in their prime. Yeah, when Bret came back, it wasn't the best thing in the world. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, Riz. Wait, did you say Shane McMahon's not living? Or did I hear that? <laughs> no, no, no. He's still living. No, he's, he's still he, living. He thought of something, but he didn't know they were living. No, okay, 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 I gotcha. But I, would, I would once again like to revise it and say a lunch place. I'm sorry, Riz. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what? For me, it would probably be Shawn Michaels. I mean, he's been back for a while, like a back and forth, back and forth. But to see him back would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's still a possibility with him. Yeah. So, uh, what about you, Russell fan? Uh, I don't know. It's 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 interesting because we we're in we're in an era where it's like we do see that a lot. We do see a lot of you know. We never thought Bret Hart was going to return at all, you know, and you know he he returned. Same thing with The Rock and you know the people. Um, I don't know if I have anyone in particular. I, honestly, I'd go with what lunchbox at a lunch of place because it's just actually it's the, one, it's the one person that i think of that you know hasn't we haven't seen in the longest of times is, is that, does that make sense yeah yeah i think so i think so i asked i i still can't believe that's anybody's first choice though my, I my know, pick like i can't say hogan or rick flair or anything yeah. like that because it's like you know but i don't it's i can't honestly i really can't think of anyone else Especially after the past couple of years and how many people we've seen come back. Uh, Chachi, you got something? Yeah, because I never actually said anyone. I just agreed with you. Oh, yes. I, I added <laughs> on to what you said. Okay. Um, I thought that was your answer. I'm sorry. No, but to go the same route that uh, WrestleFan and Lunchbox are going, I would love to see Trish back. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, Trish and Lita, fuck. <laughs> oh, I forget. Or, yeah, Lita. You know what? No, how about Lita, Lita would be the other one. Because yeah. there is apparently a very interesting thing with Lita at uh, WrestleMania Access. Really? Did anyone see this? That um, I know she was there. questions about like, who, 
who she would face um, coming in the Divas in the Vision, she kind of like, yeah, the Divas division isn't the same as it was. Like, no one's really stepped up. That was wow. a good lead impression. That's what she yeah. said. That was a very good lead that impression. I'm a little hard. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah, Wheels, you're still what's over in the Hangout, right? Yeah, Wait, I'm still here. What do you think? Honestly, uh, my thought would be a uh, pretty healthy Shawn Michaels or uh, Trish. Yeah, I totally agree with at least those two. Hmm. I mean, anybody else? They, I don't think they can really hang really right now. If I can throw a side uh, answer, World's Greatest Tag Team. True. Yes. Bring them back. Let them do stuff in the tag team division. Let them let them yeah. make it go. Like you know, I forgot all it about them. Yeah, yeah. Just because uh, mm-hmm. I, I was thinking because they're still doing great stuff over in ROH. You know why not? Excellent so, stuff. See, in I, I wouldn't drag them away from that though. No, no. I I don't think they could carry the momentum. Plus, it, WWE doesn't have the tag division. I know they don't. For I was just going to say. But they would remake it for that. No, you know what I mean? It, no. I, no, no, they'd I, separate They couldn't. They I'm with separate. Chachi. They couldn't remake it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have great tag teams in there now that they're not using. If I'm super dreaming, I want to say bring back bring back the Dudley boys at this point, you know? I mean, Bubba's doing the greatest he's ever done. And maybe after a few well, years, they're bringing him amazing in. stuff. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Dude, to Jerry. And, 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 and you know, while yeah. we're on this line, I'd love to see Kurt Angle. There's rumors going around about Kurt Angle going coming back. I don't believe it's going to happen. But, yeah, but that's from Kurt Angle. Oh, it's from Kurt Angle. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> saying that he like, wants yeah. to. That he's been in talks and all that stuff. Oh, there's there's I mean, there's, there's 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 a couple reasons for Kurt Angle coming mm-hmm. back. I think I would be excited. One, if he's if it's to that point that he can come back to the WWE, that means he's straightened his shit out. Whatever is going on, that we get all these kooky ass stories from him. That means he's probably straightened his shit out enough that he can come back to WWE. And that, I think, would be great. Because, you know, we hate hearing this shit, you know? It's definitely <laughs> colored our, our, our view of him and everything. So, yeah. um, but anyways. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, his, oh, Virgil says Bobby F.J. Town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby says Mr. Oh. Kennedy. Yeah, I'd love to see Kennedy back, yeah. to be honest. Uh, yeah. I thought he did great stuff in WWE. It was just, he was right on the cusp of doing something cool. And, and they cut it out. Uh, anyways, uh, Vim's Vim's answer is uh, MVP. Yeah, he's doing great stuff in Japan. Apparently, he is. He is. And there's that other uh, wrestling project. Uh, what was it? We've, we've talked about it in the past. Wrestling. Yeah, it's like wrestling redemption project. Yeah, it yeah, was. yeah. That that like serial thing. Like it was like an episodic, like thirteen episode thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this kind of lends into what we were just talking about. He also asks, "Will the tag titles ever mean anything again?" Nope. And can you think of it from the way? And can can you think of a team uh, that could make it relevant long term? Um, From the way it's looking, no, 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 nope, no, not at this point. I mean, you need that perfect trifecta, you know. Like, when was the last time it mattered? And can you sing anything other? I mean, yeah, okay, World's Greatest Tag Team did good stuff along with Los Guerreros and all. You know, that era was okay, but really, the best it was was the Hardys, Edge and Christian Dudleys. I mean, can you? Can you disagree with that at any point? No. Bashams. They need to, He's right. They Bashams. Need Bashams. Bashams. <laughs> Bashams. <laughs> yeah. My thing is, they need, and the, what, the, without the way they have it now, they need tag teams. They don't need, yeah. you know, whatever you want to say about Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne when they were champions, or like the contenders now, which are like Dolph Ziggler and uh, Jack Swagger and stuff like that. You need people that are going to be committed to a tag team. Yeah. yeah. That's what the Hardys were. That's what the Dudleys were. Man, Ed okay. Christian was. Can I throw out my dream scenario here? Because I, I don't think you can say one team comes back. And, and this next question is: Can you think of a team that could make it relevant in the long term? No, it's not one team showing up and being no. the badass. It, you have to get the team, and then they work with another team and say another team, and you have tremendous fuse out of the whole damn thing. Right. I mean, you, you don't like use- to me. You bring back world's greatest tag team. So that, those are the guys with the history. Much like when you look back in the day, the Dudley Boys were the guys with the history. Everybody else were the new kids. Then you bring in Kings of Wrestling. They got the pedigree. They can work together. I would love to see. They, they actually already have ran with world's greatest tag team. And then somebody else, like, out of left field gets together. Like, much like, I, you could kind of say Edge and Christian kind of came out of left field as a tag team. Right. Like, yes and but no. My thing is, 
But but you need like but so you maybe maybe Ziggler and Swagger turn into a tremendous tag team to complement these other guys. I think they I think they would be a good tag team, definitely. And Kofi and Bourne were a good tag team. Yeah. But you can't if you want to make a successful tag team division, you want to make it the way it was. You can't have tag team your tag team division based on people that are just fine. They're just giving them something to do because you don't have anything else. I yeah. mean, like because Ziggler can just move on to you know the U.S. title or Swagger or Kofi or Evan. And maybe you know? they're trying to do that when when uh, you know Airborne was getting together. But of course, Evan Evan Bourne's issues, you know, be it drugs or or injuries, or it kind of put a kibosh yeah. on that. Maybe there was a game plan going forward, or you know, but it just it gets stopped so many times, so they just killed it off. Well, yeah, right now, I just hate it when they use the tag team titles to. Intercept, become part of a story that's a, something greater than the tag team titles. Well, that's a lot like, of Remember that's when a lot Jericho of. had like that series, like series of partners, like you had like Big Show and then like uh, Edge and like. But that's uh, because everybody got hurt. Well, yeah, yeah and then yeah. like teaming with yeah, the that's, Miz that's basically, and stuff yeah, like Everybody got hurt, but, so they had to go up in line all the time. So they had to change. But and that then was. Got, and then the audio guy has to mix. Another song with Y2J's song, <laughs> but but yeah. still, but still, like that was that was one of those cases where like Jericho steps up with say Miz or Edge and says we're sick of this, we're going to step up and take over, and we're starting with tag title belts because that's important. That was a that was probably the best thing to happen to tag title for a while was these guys coming from the main event side and saying this is important, we're going to get this belt. I just that's yeah, what makes it they, legitimate. What's gonna, it's all about WWE's confidence. Yeah. What's that, Chuck? Uh, what what's going to have to happen is you you're talking WWE brings in four to six guys to rebuild the tag division. Yeah, yeah. They do not have what they need to rebuild that division. Or it doesn't I, have to be go ahead. No, uh, we, well, well, you know, so, we, I mean, we, on we, the lines of what you're saying, they would have to bring in the world's greatest tag team. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. They have uh, Primo and uh, Epico. 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 Uh, and then they have the Usos. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's three tag teams right there. Uh, if they stick with Kofi and R Truth, which they wouldn't, that yeah. would be your odd tag team. Or Santino and. Uh, Brodus Clay. Brodus Clay. Mm -hmm. That would be your odd tag team. So they would still have to bring in another one or two tag teams. Or and create one. Or it's cre not even... What are they going to create? Well, it's not even the amount of tag teams, though. No. It's, you know, you take the tag teams like... Primo you cannot... Epico, you cannot the create... Uso, the, you know, you take those tag teams that are tag teams... I'm sorry, the the Usos are not going to have successful singles runs. No. Neither is Primo and Epico. No. You can argue that for the world's greatest tag team. Yeah. You know, but... Um, Two tag... You have to have people that are dedicated to being tag team wrestlers. Two tag teams does not a tag division make. And that's why I say you got to bring. You do have to bring in more. That, now, let's throw this to the wrestle fan. Now, you, you've been watching this as well. But I think there's some been, been some interesting tag team development over on NXT. Oh, yeah. Kirk, uh, Kirk Hawkins and Tyler Rex. Hawkins and Rex. The Usos are doing a bunch of stuff over there. You've had some other variations. Like, they had Kid and uh, Gabriel team up for that, yeah. that pre-WrestleMania match. And I think they uh, did a couple like others. Tyler, right, but that would Tyler never Tyler stick. Tyler and Darren well, Young. But this is, a nice, this is a nice testing ground to see how it goes. Actually, if you want to see tag team wrestling, go watch NXT right now. That's where it is. Maybe that's what it's relegated no, to. Fine. Based what? off what they do on it, based off I what don't... they're doing on NXT, this wouldn't really work. But back in FCW, Derek Bateman and Johnny Curtis had an awesome tag team mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they were just sort of like not comedy, but in a way comedy. But they were still like back stuff up in the and, ring. And you never know; it's it, like, could, it could come back around to that too. Yeah, it's you have these people. You have the you. Have, it's not like WWE has a lack of talent. They just your tag the team they don't belts. Have confidence in them. Your tag team championship belts should not be dependent on your reality television show. Oh, it's so far away from that right now. <laughs> okay. No, no, it's more which, than reality which, no, television. Which, which comes first? What comes first? Do, do you have a good tag division to build the belts, or do your belts have to mean something for your tag division to mean something? Yes. I Second. think it goes well, hand in hand. You have to have a good tag division, or the belts are going to mean shit just like they do now. 
no one gives two fucks about the tag belts. You want to know I, why? I'm completely honest. I don't even know who the title holders are. Exactly. It's wrestling. I have no clue. Exactly. For the record, it's Primo and Epico. But you would never fucking know that because they they decided yeah, the I... championship in a triple threat match before WrestleMania, and that was the last time we saw them. Yeah, when was yeah. the last time you saw it on Raw? Exactly. Yeah. The last time we saw it on Raw is when Epico and Primo fought the Usos. No, no, it was a it was a three way. It was a three way the uh, Primo and Epico, Ziggler, Swagger, and Kofi Truth, I think. That no, was no, a no, no, great no. match. What? Oh, I feel like, can I just say I hate the Kofi Truth tag team because one, Kofi can do so much better, and two, they're only teaming because they're black. Kofi can <laughs> do so much better. And he should be he should not be in the tag division. However, I think they need to put him in the tag division to help the tag division. Yeah, yeah. I mean with something like I mean really him and Bourne were a great team. Exactly. Like, that's the first one was like that makes sense. Airborne, yeah. they had a name, their trunks were matching, they got the song together. I think they had an independent yeah, song. Oh my god, this is they're a tag team. Yes. It was a tag it, team. A real, real tag team. And then Evan hit the drugs. The Riz just got up and left. He's so pissed off about this. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, okay. That's enough. We, we, we went on that for a while. But, um... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. In the event that there is... N- uh, we got one more question from them. Uh, in, in the case that there is not another Undertaker match next year, who would you put in the ring with Stone Cold for the showcase match? CM Punk. CM Punk. CM, CM Punk. Punk. Let's do it. Punk. Remember, chaps. Oh, no. Remember, chaps. I thought you were talking about chaps. <laughs> yeah. Remember, chaps. chaps. I'm listening. <laughs> I don't know if I put... I, I love CM Punk. Don't get me wrong. I love CM Punk. The dude can do whatever the fuck he wants, and I will enjoy it. I do not mind that he got he's in an angle where he got mishit with a, a a bottle of liquor that broke before it hit him. I don't care, okay? I don't care that they're fucking with his straight edgedness right now because it makes for good watching. Mm-hmm. However, I don't believe that CM Punk could carry Stone Cold Steve Austin. Whoa, really? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I'm sorry because it, he would, because he would need to at this. Yes, point. It, it's not. It's nothing against CM Punk. It's just the type of match that he would have to have with Stone Cold to make it so that he could carry Stone Cold is not the type of match that CM Punk would have. What what kind of match are you thinking? It would be a dirty, dirty match. Now I want <laughs> I want to bring back I want to bring back because I don't it because we forget about Stone Cold. It wouldn't be. He is a good wrestler. Have you? Remember? No, I mean he is. Oh, he, do you, no, do you no, remember the stuff he did with Regal? Stop. He was a good wrestler. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows what kind of shape he's in now? Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows what his body can take? Well, okay. First of all, because one bad arm as drag. Far as, as far as far as as far as the shape, if he was going to WrestleMania, he would get in shape. I mean, that's that's like he would he would be doing whatever you need to do for that. Uh, the, yeah, the neck is the question. Exactly, one bad arm drag. But what I mean, what issues did Bret Hart have, and they made that work? But hopefully, it wouldn't be such a yeah. that. Bret Hart that was a shit show. show. That was that was that a was little bit. Yeah, that was pretty messed up. Yeah. But um, and, and what kind of issues do does Undertaker have at this point? He put on and a match like, like he did. I mean, like no, that's exactly he, he what I'm talking how, about. What, 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 what's that? How long did what he last? Like nine years. Yeah, yeah. And and he injured his neck in ninety seven and still wrestled till like two thousand three. Exactly. Dude, exactly. some some injuries don't just get better. You know, he will have neck problems for the rest of his life, just like Edge will, just like Angle will. That doesn't just go away. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, yeah, Edge, was Edge, Edge, Edge was just smart enough Edge was just smart enough to walk away like the rest of these guys did. Yeah, I think he was told, so Yeah. The rest of them were told. <laughs> Yeah, the rest of them are well, yeah, well, we it's all. It's all the, it's all the same. A neck injury is a neck injury. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you've had surgery on your neck, you're still one bad move away from paralyzation. Cena's had had surgery on his neck. Yeah, he had, yeah. I remember, he had that little yeah. keel he, he surgery. Would, he, yeah, in he had, Pittsburgh. He was, it was the one where they went <laughs> through the front. He had it like over at uh, Allegheny General, over on the north side, and he came over for SmackDown because they were in town. It couldn't have been that serious. It couldn't have been as serious no, as the rest I, of them. It's probably no. It's not. Well, it, it, it could be it was bad enough 
uh, but it was a new, a different kind of surgery because Kurt Angle did a di- Kurt Angle did that surgery too, and that's supposedly okay, why. Okay, anyhow, he's we're getting off topic. Other guys. We're getting off tangent. So who oh, would you have? To okay, talk to? hold on. Wait, wait, stop. I, I want to go back to what you said because you brought up Undertaker. No, actually, Vim brought up Undertaker. No, you brought up Undertaker. No, because I said, "Will you shut up?" <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will explain how Sorg brought up Undertaker. I don't people, understand how I brought up Undertaker. We were talking about injuries, Stop and you said, and you said, "Well, what about Undertaker? Who carried him?" No, you said. Bret no, I Hart. said, "What about his injuries?" Exactly. You yeah. said, "What about his injuries?" Yeah. Triple H is the type of wrestler that can carry Undertaker, and to, because it's the same style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Let me disagree with you a little bit there. It wasn't Triple H that carried The Undertaker. It was the style of match that carried The Undertaker. Because you don't have to be technically proficient to get hit with a chair. And that happened a lot in that match. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I wasn't just talking about this particular match. I'm talking about the previous two mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Those guys, Fair. Those guys have worked with Undertaker long enough that they know his style, they can adapt their own style, and they right. can carry him in the match needed. It, yeah, if, if, if CM Punk, Punk the... has never worked with Stone Cold. What? In that capacity. Stone Cold <laughs> is unfamiliar with CM Punk's style. style. CM Punk what? is unfamiliar with Stone Cold's style. What? Therefore, I don't believe that CM Punk could carry Stone Cold in a manner that would make the match good. Yeah. And, not, and honestly, even with that, you know, the fact that those guys do have two completely different styles, like, I don't see that, you know, being a big draw just from the fact, oh, one drinks beer, one doesn't. You know? Like, no, I don't, I, no. there would have to be, they would have to have a similar style to sort of, you know. No, they don't. No, they don't. I, mean, I don't think that's, yeah, I mean, like I said, remember, like, Stone Cold is a technical wrestler. He just, oh, no. he yeah, just turned I mean, his character against the technical wrestling, but he could but still do CM it. Punk, yeah. Even CM Punk's style is much different than the style from anyone back in the, back in that yeah, era. Yeah, so, yeah. Honestly, I don't know who. What, what becomes the marquee next? What, yeah, I, I don't know who. Who could do it? Mark I think, Henry. I don't know if it'll work. <laughs> I really don't. I don't think it'll turn out well. But I think they're going to try to do Brock and Taker. If he's around for a year, that that's the only thing that makes Ugh. sense. And yeah, it's going to be a, a fucking, shit show. It's, that's it's gonna awful. Be, it's going to be a fucking travesty if they do that. I mean, Sorg. think about it. Think Sorg. about it. Because no, 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 wait, wait. Because they had the, they had the face off with Undertaker, and I don't know. Maybe after what they how they ha- did the send off this year, maybe it's it's just done with Undertaker. But they had the face to face. Taker's always got this MMA styling that he's developed over the last few years, oh, and no. you've got Brock. Like whatever they're going to do with him and Cena and whoever else over the next year is going to be whatever to say this is Brock Lesnar and he's legitimate like what how they I'm sorry but he's Cena uh, wait wait go ahead Chuck um I swear to god the <laughs> thought of that match alone makes me not want to watch Wrestlemania yeah yeah mm-hmm. no I, I mean I, I mean not watch that match I mean not watch Wrestlemania they had great matches in the past I will not Watch WrestleMania if maybe, it's on the card. Maybe we're nope. going to tune in the Extreme nope. Rules, and we're going to find out Brock Lesnar is still a pretty damn good wrestler. Brock Lesnar was <laughs> never a good wrestler! <laughs> yes, he, he was. was. never a good wrestler. He was whoa. barely a good MMA fighter. Whoa, 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 whoa. I remember get, being really excited about Taker Brock in the cell. I remember being really excited about Angle uh, uh, Brock at WrestleMania, except that he almost killed himself. Mm. I mean, Not for was... their technical ability. What's that? Not for their technical ability. Oh yeah, yeah yes, yeah. it was because yeah, Brock yeah, yeah. Lesnar is a former Brock. NCAA champ. He's a former amateur wrestler. Yeah, Brock's the same. I, I remember. He's also a former oh, guys. football player. What well, that doesn't Brock's mean? Is, yeah, same, for a Brock's minute. The same great professional wrestler he was. He showed that on Monday Night Raw when he legitimately hit John Cena in the face. Yes, no, no, that in was, the face. No, no, that was. Remember what happened? With Floyd? No, no. no that he, was awesome. Remember what happened with Floyd and Mayweather? Don't tell me that shit. <laughs> I don't want to remember that. <laughs> okay. What are you playing? Sorg. 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 I want you to go back and rewatch what happened on Raw. Okay. Okay. Brock Lesnar's first punch legitimately hit John Cena in the face. Uh-huh. No pulling. Yeah. The rest of his punches 
Look like you punch. Were, <laughs> were wrestling horribly. punches. Yes. Horribly. No, I think that guy has no sense of no, no, that's, skill that's whatsoever. A, that's a hit me for real for to make it look good. That's no, what that is. No. Come on. I don't believe anything. You're in denial, I believe, sir. I don't believe anything that happened on Monday night me. was an accident. You're in denial. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That's that's where I stand. This is this is just like what they did with Floyd Mayweather. Oh crap! He just bloodied bloodied uh, Big Show's nose because he's a legitimate fighter. Brock Lesnar no. just came in and bloodied Cena's lip because he's a legitimate <laughs> a fighter. Difference. Real blood Listen, makes we, him seem real. Okay. We'll stop you. I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh, being in the UFC uh-huh. does not make you a legitimate fighter. <laughs> <laughs> No, because no, that no, shit no, it, it, is it, it, just as scripted. In this case, what, what's that? It makes you mentally unstable. So what happened was, <laughs> Cena hauls off. Let's not forget this part. Cena hauls off and hits Brock Lesnar. Slaps him across the face. And that did happen, and it did connect. He, he Brock did sees White. He's not the best person in the world at keeping his temper. And the first thing he does is smash John Cena in the face, which draws blood, which is good. But Brock has been told ever since the negotiations started that we're not doing blood anymore. And he thinks, oh, fuck, I just blew my entire chance here no, so, that, so that, yeah he's no, flustered no, no. and the rest of his shit doesn't connect blood blood isn't blood blood hasn't been a consideration one way or another for a while we haven't had a stopped match for stopping blood for we a while no, they stopped they match. So no I mean, but i'm just that saying you know that like he, no one went i guarantee that hit was legitimate because he was pissed off casino hit him a little harder than uh, he was expecting no, no i i believe it's what they wanted to see what, what you got there uh, russell fan uh, Russell fan? I, 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 I agree with Chachi. It's not if it, – it's a, there's a bigger difference than what happened with Floyd Mayweather and the Big Show because the Floyd Mayweather thing, Big Show was taunting him, let him get a punch in. He got one punch in and got the you know black eye or whatever. Yeah. And then they go to this thing and – in a, in a part where uh, Lesnar like, takes him down and sort of starts wailing in on punches, they're not going to, you know, oh, you have to connect on one punch, and then, you know, like, it's... It, it doesn't... I don't, hey, it doesn't I don't see... It's not like it's never happened in wrestling before. Did anybody watch the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mick Foley DVD where he's talking about he wanted uh, Vader to bloody him on TV legit-wise? Throwing potatoes at his face on, like, WCW Saturday Night? This is something that happens in wrestling, guys. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I don't think there was WWE's plan. Anyways, let's move on with uh, amateur falling down. The indie minute, sir. Indie minute. Uh, so for, first thing I'm going to talk about in the indie minute is some Ring of Honor news. For those that um, bought the uh, Ring of Honor pay per views on uh, I, uh, on uh, WrestleMania weekend, which was a showdown in the Sun nights one and two. Uh, there was some issue on the second night, I believe, where uh, part of the pay per view had cut out. Um, Ring of Honor is amending this by posting the two matches that they that were cut from the pay-per-view onto their YouTube channel, so you can watch those for free. Um, that includes uh, Adam Cole facing Kyle O'Reilly in a street fight between the All Night Express and the Young Bucks. Um, so you can definitely uh, check that out on their YouTube channel. And then they also announced uh, coming. Well, um, someone had asked uh, Kevin Kelly on Twitter. Um, if their next pay-per-view event, which is entitled Border Wars, which is the Ring of Honor Chikara uh, uh, show, um, if it's going to be on iPay-per-view. Uh, apparently, Kevin Kelly replied, yes, not on not on Go Fight Live, though, thank God. So apparently, uh, they are shopping around for a different uh, iPay-per-view company. Um, apparently, they will have the announcement soon. Um, so th- it will be interesting to see what comes of that. Um, for Ring of Honor, if uh, this new iPay pay per view company will be any better, or if they're going to try to make some improvements, um, so but you can definitely go check them out uh, rohwrestling dot com for more information. And, and as a side, I mean, there are plenty of other companies doing like live streaming, uh, you know, specialized stuff. I mean, even YouTube. I mean, we know what we saw with WWE this week, so I mean, I, right. I can't see that being a possibility. Um, and uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, Go Fight Live has been an interesting concept. But it really, um, when your website doesn't get updated for a while, like in look and style, and you know the the you know I I appreciate everything like GoFi Live has been doing. I think there's been a lot they've opened up for a lot of people. But this right. thing this thing looks like it was built in 2005. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, 
I see I see a worry from that, and I can't really speak for like you know the, the you know it, you know the the production side of it. I know you don't need much to do something right. like Go Fight Live, so it's very accessible for smaller guys like. You know, basically any wrestling company. I mean, PWO mm-hmm. did it for their thing. Uh, anybody else, you know. And there, But then there's more chance of, you know, running into issues. But they, there is like definitely that, so. more chance of, of running into issues. I mean, there, it, and for what you're paying for, for $15, you know, versus like what it would have been if it was like on pay-per-view with like HD net or something, you know. Um, right. I mean, it's definitely a quality thing. Uh, I really hope Go Fight Live keeps getting better. And I would love to see them just update a little bit stuff to look like they're competitive um you know and, and there's plenty of other wrestling on there uh oh but, yeah but uh you know that's be, but there's but there, there has definitely been some flags with go fight live but you know the, you know best to them and i hope they they still uh you know give a lot of other people opportunities like that but i like to see what what does dragon gate go through Dragon Gate goes through, um, I forgot what the title, but it's, I think, w, WWR or something like that. Um, WWN some, Live, it looks like, over is, here. Is that what it says? Yeah, and I'm not familiar with them, so maybe my, my guess from is what, that. From what I've seen, that service is much, it's much cleaner in, yeah. in, you know, like the page and stuff like that. So yeah. it definitely may, I don't know, maybe Ring of Honor could go in that direction. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a big consideration. Like, you know, I have a few clients that have like websites that don't look. I don't think they've been updated in like five years, and like as, uh, visually, and it just it shows. And I think it's a it's a mark against you as a company. So I try sure. to keep the updates coming on our websites, like for the podcast and stuff. Um, like I know, you know, it went way too long on Wrestling Mayhem show there for a while. Um, but I mean, that's just it's just one of those things, you know. Uh, but. You know, I, I like to see where they go and see, you know, whether a company is popping up here, you know? But yeah, anyways. Definitely. All right, back to you, WrestleFans. Sorry for that. Uh, the next the next thing I want to talk about is a company that we haven't talked about in a while, but has a, a really interesting show coming up this weekend. Uh, CZW, Combat Sun Wrestling, is, ha- is uh, having a return to their uh, annual Best of the Best uh, event, which is basically a tournament-style show which features some of the best young talents in uh in the world, quite frankly, today for uh, independent wrestling. A lot of great talents are going to be there. Some CZW talents like Drake Younger, Greg Excellent, Sammy Callahan. Also, a friend of the show, Johnny Gargano, will be there. Um, uh, ACH, who's the heavyweight champion for Anarchy Championship Wrestling here in Texas, will be participating. Chuck Taylor. Uh, there's uh, participants from the California area, from England, from various different uh, areas. Uh, so you can definitely uh, check them out. That's going to be a really awesome show. That's uh, April 14th, this Saturday, in Voorhees, New Jersey, um, Voorhees. at the Flyer Skate Zone. Uh, you can get your tickets at uh, czwrestling.com. Uh, so definitely go and check them out. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Thank you. Can, can, can I point out a couple of matches here? Uh, it looks like well, like, this, this is a tournament that starts off with three-way matches, it looks like. Uh, one of them is like Chuck Taylor, Johnny Gargano, and Samurai Del Sol. No, oh, yeah, that's, right yeah, off that's the bat, gonna... you've caught my attention. Of course, uh, oh, it's Sammy Callaghan, Drake Younger, and I don't know these other two, uh, MK McKinnon and Trent Seven, uh, Lynn Dorado is Dorado is on here. Um, that that looks that looks like fun, you know. Uh, that'd be oh hey, they, they... this is interesting, guys. That I know we know a little bit locally from IWC, Jake Christ and Dave Christ, which I believe mm-hmm. are the Irish Airboard. One yeah, on the one. Irish Airboard. Actually, one half of them is the. Uh... CZW champion, so the Wire TV championship match. Yeah, that's it's a uh, that'd be interesting. So apparently, to, uh, Tony Nice from uh, TNA will be wrestling there as well. And this huh. is going to be this is more. This really seems like it, it, you know you think Combat Zone wrestling, you think like barbed wire uh, hardcore stuff, but this yeah. is more. You know, this was this, this was an event that usually held every year. They actually didn't help uh, hold it last year. Um, but it really does showcase a lot of the younger talent. Yeah, um, yeah. a lot of the top independent talents uh, in in the world. It's like um, it's like a super believe, indie. Yeah, very much. Um, I, I believe Shima Zion wrestled there once before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of great stuff, and it's a good way to get your name out there. Exactly, exactly. All right, what's next, sir? Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about is I'm going to two events this weekend in the Texas <laughs> area that I want to uh, touch on. Uh, the first one will be this Saturday for River City Wrestling in San Antonio, Texas. Their big 10th year anniversary show, which is definitely going to be a very big treat. Um, the main event will be a title for title match 
uh, for the RCW Championship and the International Championship. Uh, Brooklyn's finest AJ Summers with uh, Joey Spector in his corner will be taking on uh, Alyssa Flash with, uh, in her corner, Shelly Martinez, former WWE TNA uh, star, uh, in a, uh, in a uh, match as, as we stare at Shelly Martinez and uh, uh, Alyssa Flash there. Um, so... Also on that show is going to be a, a great match between front of the show Ray Rowe as he's going one on one with the large door Michael Faith, and what is going to be prob- I I will say from what I've seen from both men it's definitely going to be a match that's going to I believe steal a show. Um, it's going to you know two heavyweights that are really going to go at it and you know tear each other apart. Uh, there's also a added um, sort of treat, I guess, for the fans. We mentioned I believe we mentioned from their last show that they had a fan lumberjack strap match. Um, which definitely, inter- which definitely entertained the crowd. This uh, this month they will be holding a fan lumberjack Royal Rumble match. Uh, basically, uh, so it's a the, basically the style of the Royal Rumble. Anyone's allowed to participate: wrestlers, managers, referees. Um, so basically, if you get eliminated, not only do you are you out of the match, but you get strapped by some lucky RCW fans. Um, where they'll be holding, a, they'll be holding a raffle, uh, two dollars per ticket, and you can have your chance to be a lumberjack in that match. Um, so it's definitely going to be a lot of great stuff. Gorgeous George will be there of WCW fame. Um, the Headhunters will be returning. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be really good stuff, and we're going to uh, uh, definitely uh, have a fun time celebrating RCW's ten year anniversary. Uh, if you want to get tickets, go to uh, RiverCityWrestling.net to go check them out and uh, order your tickets. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. And then the next night, I will be at an event event in Austin, Texas for Anarchy Championship Wrestling uh, entitled Peace, Love, and Anarchy. Um, It'll be at the uh, Mohawks in Austin, Texas on 912 Red River Street. Uh, This event is going to be definitely a really good one. Uh, Four-way match for the ACW Heavyweight Championship, ACH Defense, against the infamous Sean Vex, Gary J, and Biohazard Jacus Pliskin. Um, Jerry Lynn will be in action on his road uh, to uh, retirement here. He will, be fa- he will be facing an opponent of his choosing. Uh, Matthew Palmer will be defending the ACW World Hardcore title against Rachel Summerlin, um, which is definitely going to be a very intriguing matchup. Rachel Summerlin, known for uh, her past in hardcore wrestling, so it's definitely going to be a treat. Uh, other uh, matches include Angel Blue taking on Barbie Hayden for the Joshi title. Um, a lot of really great stuff. Uh, Serenity, who is uh, a big uh, standout in the St. Louis area and has wrestled for companies like Resistance Pro, which is uh, Billy Corrigan's federation. She will be making her ACW debut taking on Lady Poison. Um, so it's going to be a really great show if you are there. Uh, definitely, I hope to see you guys there. Um, like I said, Peace, Love, and Anarchy uh, this Sunday. Um, Mohawks, 912 Red River in Austin, Texas. Reserve front row seats, $15. General admission, $10. Um, all ages. Uh, it's definitely going to be a really great show. So uh, check out our friends at AnarchyChampionshipWrestling.com. And it's uh, going to be some great stuff. And that is the Indie Minute for this week. Hey, Russell fan. Yes, nice, nice job, buddy. Thank you. And also, I, I would like to uh, point out that Lady Poison is my nickname for DJ Sauce in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him. Lady Poison. <laughs> Actually, uh, my nickname for Chachi is Lady Penis. So, Right. <laughs> Lady Penis. We share a lot here on the main show. <laughs> All right, thanks, <laughs> Russell fan, and let's put it on me so I can talk. Oh. Um, all right, let's take it to the break here. I uh, give you an idea of what's going on on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold by the app, and this is a little glimmer. What's going to happen here? What's going on? What's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa! Wrestling Mayhem Show, the greatest fucking podcast on the internet. It's here, and was I'm also going to fuck. Uh, what's her name? What's the What's the chick who gives me my emails? <laughs> Edie. Not Edie, no, no, the live, the real person. The real person. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Calm your shit down. What's up, folks? It's DJ Lunchbox is Wrestling Mayhem Show. Welcome back. Good work on making it to the second half. You are the chosen one. And this is your reward. A little segment that we like to call. Remember when?
this week is going to be a little bit of a group effort. As you know, this is Wrestling Mayhem Show 316. What? So it is only right and appropriate. What? <laughs> For us to pay tribute to the baddest man, the toughest beer drinkingest, cock suckingest man in the WWE. That's right, folks. Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? 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 And we will be going round the horn, uh, choosing our best and greatest Stone Cold Steve Austin moments. And uh, I will kick things off this week by taking you back to a little match that uh, you know it. You've all seen it. I don't need to remind you what it was or when it was. Stone Cold versus Bret Hart. Stone Cold passes out in the sharpshooter. The match was brutal. It showed what he could do technically, and it showed what Bret Hart could do brutally. It was an absolute, absolutely fantastic match, and my all-time favorite Stone Cold Steve Austin memory. Chachi? Yes? Your turn. I sent two. Okay. okay. Uh, they're in the email. Uh, the first one, you don't have to play. Uh, I sent it because I thought you would want to watch it later. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a breakdown of the entire feud uh, around the, uh, the smoking skull belt that he did with The Rock including the whole rock throwing the belt into the river and everything, and uh, him having, it's on now, him having the big show pull down the Titan Tron and him tearing up the Titan Tron. Like, it, it's one of my favorite moments in Stone Cold history. And then the, uh, the second one is the one where he drives a cement truck into the building and proceeds to fill up Vince McMahon's Corvette. Don't make any bad Hot Wheels comments about that. It's amazing. I, I want to know if there's a guy in the truck with him. If not, he is extremely efficient at driving a cement truck and operating a cement truck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, I seriously want to know if uh, there had to have been someone in the truck with him. Like, hiding and operating all this stuff, because... It's just too well done. I love, I love that the video that you gave us was one with somebody with a camera on their TV. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a, I was rushed for time. It was the first one I found. But, uh, yeah, here it goes. Wait for it. Cement! Car! And he, just, it. he fills up the whole thing. And the windows go... Ksh. Oh, yeah, when it fills up completely and the windows just shatter. Yeah. Look at that. I, I learned several things from this. Um, a, a Corvette can hold a lot of cement. Yeah. And B, how to pour cement into a car. <laughs> I'm surprised the tires didn't pop. Yeah. It Well, a lot of it leaked out, so. But yeah, those those have to be my uh, two favorite Stone Cold moments. Uh, WrestleFan? <laughs> Yeah, me. Um, so I, I, everyone knows how long I've been a wrestling fan. So I didn't get to enjoy. A lot <laughs> no, of the let's go to the remember box. No, I actually had one. Okay. Um, the, 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 so I didn't get to enjoy the whole Stone Cold Vince McMahon stuff because you know that wasn't my era. But I did get to enjoy something very similar to that, and that was the feud between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Eric Bischoff, which for me was. Was Vince McMahon? It's and it was a nice redo of the whole Austin McMahon thing because there was a lot behind it. You know the fact that uh, they were talking about how you know Bischoff fired Austin over the phone from WCW and stuff like that. Um, and they had a good series of just like feuds and stuff like that. I remember, and I think we mentioned this on the show before, when they were co-general managers of Raw, and how. How Eric Bischoff had uh, a thing where basically during the intro of Raw, right before it was done, they would flash a bit a uh, picture of Eric Bischoff. So what they would do, since they were co-general managers, they would do a picture of Eric Bischoff and then a picture of So Cold Steve Austin. It was just so fun to hear the crowd when the thing goes uh, when the uh, the uh, intro video ends. They just go, "Boo, yay!" <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was it was a fun it was a really fun time uh, for me getting to see that kind of stuff. So uh, it was definitely it was definitely really cool stuff. Uh, so Riz, 
I actually have two myself. Uh, my my first one is my first pay per view ever. The main event was Kane and Austin in the first blood match, and seeing this like they steal the uh, hell in a cell come down on top of uh, Austin and seeing him battle Kane was probably one of the best toppers of a, of my first pay-per-view to ever be there. But if I can go back before Steve Ott, before Scum and Cord happened, can I do that? It, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, back in the day, Stunning Steve Austin from WCW. <laughs> or it was a Steve Williams back then. No, it was Austin. Austin. Stunning Steve Austin back from the back in the day. Uh, one of my first memories of him was actually as a manager of his manager. If you don't know who that is, his manager was Colonel Parker. And every every time he came out to the ring, all the the fans were chanting Colonel Sanders to Colonel Parker. But there was one time where they got their wish. And Colonel Parker wrestled in a match. And Stone Cold Steve Austin, or Stunning Steve, as he was known in WCW, did a spot-on impersonation of his manager. As the man- like he had the cowboy hat, smoked a cigar... And had the same accent as Colonel Parker. And it was in preparation for Colonel Parker's first match, which was against, uh, shit, uh, what was his name? I'm blanking on his, on who he fought. Uh, Brian Pillman. That's who it was. And it was the loser wears a chicken suit. So that's how, what I remember. Uh, Sorg. Or did, did, Chachi, did you go? I got it. I did. I it. Okay, okay. Okay, I, sword. I got this. Uh, again, this is uh, also my first um, pay-per-view. Uh, like, first pay-per-view I ever bought. I always had the tapes, like, months after they came out and everything like that. But this is my first WWF one because I was getting WCW for uh, a few years before this. It was, let's see if I can find it here, SummerSlam 1988. Wait, what did I say? 1998. <laughs> it was Highway to Hell, and it was a tremendous match between Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I wasn't watching. I was watching WWF kind of periodically, getting back into it at the time, and this is the match that brought me back full steam with WWF right here. And uh, it was a tremendous match, and uh, I'd watch again, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> carry on, carry on. Wheels? Wheels? Yep, I'm here, don't worry. I was sitting there thinking and watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I have two myself. One was, of course, the beer truck. Slamming into the ring and moving at like 50 feet. And the next would be, of course, the awesome bed, like hospital bed scene with Vince McMahon and just whacking with a bedpan. <laughs> so, I actually have three because I'm greedy that way. Well, I'm um, not going to be able to cue all of them. Ah, it's all right. I'm just talking about the last one would be the great uh, four-wheeler first time flying around the ring. It was great. So those are my three moments. Excellent, excellent. We had a few from the uh, chat and and everything. Uh, One is uh, uh, Juggalo John uh, had this one. Uh, This is from, I I don't know what this is from, but apparently, actually it's from a Raw uh, but remember, ICP was part of everything, and he came in, and I guess he attacked ICP and the headbangers. And you see the first one he hits, bam, right there, Violent J of the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> apparently hit him so hard. According to, you can't see it because of the pixelation on this video, uh, but apparently left a, a, a face paint print in the mat. 
So I actually can see a little <laughs> bit of weight back there. That's pretty funny. Um, and we had also from the chat room, uh, Stone Cold cracking Vince in the head with a bedpan, of course. Uh, we'll always make him smile, uh, Bobby F. J-Town. And uh, laugh no matter uh, what. Best Stone Cold moment. Also, the Brian Pillman gun incident is something I'll never forget. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh the controversial mm-hmm. gun incident with Brian Pillman. Wow. Uh, who anybody uh, recall watching that when it happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I that was just like what? I mean, did it just like wow? This got serious, huh? <laughs> and then you realize down the years they use the same damn house. They what? They seem to use the same house. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never noticed that actually. So, yeah, you ever know, with the windows? You know, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they um, didn't they do something with Vince McMahon where like the Undertaker was invading his house, house or something like that? Oh, it when he when like he kidnapped Stephanie. House. Yeah, it was the same house from when he okay, kidnapped there's there's Stephanie. the house from the outside. There's a little bit of a shot of it. So let's test that. Let's say it was it was when Undertaker like Undertaker in, uh, like a Dutch house like invasion sorts. maybe. Um, you should also check the Randy Orton Triple H one. That's the one I was going to say too. Yeah, yeah I, I, I bet. Back. I bet. I'm not going to be able to find that one. Because that, uh, gar- that, that garage looks familiar too. The garage is familiar. We all know this house. We just didn't it's know Getty it. Getty images. So Getty images. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, what's that? I'm hiding. When... I love. I love John's comment on this. I'm hiding for my life. But I'll have a camera crew with me. <laughs> so there you go. Triple H or any Orton. Yeah, like we said. Uh, excellent, guys. So with that, uh, let's uh, take it to Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem right here on the Mayhem Show. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, fans and friends of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, it's Mad Mike here once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now I could sit here and talk to you about how lackluster Raw was last night. I could tell you how Brock Lesnar F5 John Cena once again. I could even talk to you about how potentially awesome the wedding between ODB and Eric Young is going to be on Impact. Honestly, I really think people should watch that. I know if you don't watch TNA, whatever, tune in for that because I have a feeling it's going to be hilarious. And also, there's a feud between Austin Aries and Bully Ray that's pretty awesome. Um, But, I'm here to tell you one very important thing. Last week, I was here to tell you to vote for Mad Mike for the Mayhemis. And I still want you to do that for all the reasons I have said and many, many more than that. But, I have something that no other member of the Wrestling Mayhem Show has. I have... I, th- this is this is monumental. See, I... I don't even need the Mayhemi anymore. Because... Last night... While I was at work... A friend of the show posted on... Um, on his Facebook page... That he was tired and couldn't sleep. So I suggested to him... I said, hey... While you're up, why not vote for Mad Mike for the Mayhemis for best host of the year? And he said, gladly, mate. Now, that man, that all-important man, is Vimmel. For those of you who don't know who Vimmel is, Vimmel is the first fan of the show. This is like getting the pat on the back from Luthes. This is like Reggie Jackson telling me that I can hit a good home run. This is more important than any mayhem. I have the support of Vimmel, and none of the other nominees will ever have that support. So vote for Mad Mike. A vote for Mad Mike is a vote for Vimmel. And you don't want to fuck with Vimmel. Because he's a doctor and he'll cut you up, especially if you don't have lupus. Peace, bitches. Listen, Mad Mike. <laughs> if that even, is your real I don't even know t- why we call you that. If that is your yeah, real if temperament. If that is your temperament. 
<laughs> I feel like I said peppermint. <laughs> if that is your mood. <laughs> He's happy, Mike. Just go back. Crazy. Go back. Mary Mike of Mayhem. Yes. Yes. Mary Mike of Mayhem. <laughs> Listen. No. No. Fans of the show, I dare you to go back. Everybody, tweet them. To go back and watch all of the mad Mike minutes of Mayhem and tell me exactly how angry he is and how many of them. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> chances are, he's not very mad at all. <laughs> at all. So, a vote for Mad Mike is a vote for lies. <laughs> I'm Chachi Says. Vote AJ Chachi. Mayhem is 2011. This is... Oh my god. And you approve this message. And I approve this message. A vote for me <laughs> is a vote for puppies, honesty, freedom, America, and cheese. Mm. Oh, I like cheese. <laughs> and bacon. I will not lie to you. I will not lie to you about my mood. My mood is it conveyed in the tone of my voice each and every week. You can tell when I'm happy. You can tell when I'm yelling at WrestleFan. It usually involves a lot of shut the fuck up, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chachi Says, host of the year, Mayhemies. Wow. Race 2012. So, uh, Raw guys? <laughs> it's Sorg's <guys. laughs> you know, Sorg's dying over there in the corner. I, I'm pretty sure I made I made him laugh up a lung. <laughs> so, uh, Finn, good job. Yeah, let, let's Finn, how long? How long is the opening for the Mayhemies? Uh, the opening, actually, I believe we're going to announce the winners next week. Yes. Yeah. Next um, week. Next week. Oh, yes. Jesus Christ! Listen. All right. If we're gonna announce, <laughs> if we're gonna announce the winners next week, I have something to say. <laughs> Preach on, lunchbox. <laughs> listen, listen to me closely. All right, I'm gonna bring you in. I'm gonna put this, and I'm gonna bring you in close. He's gonna right? put down a sandwich. <laughs> <This is> just... <laughs> what you know is pizza, and it's over here. And I'll share it with you, the listener, if you listen. I'll pay attention. All right, I'm gonna bring you in close. I'm not talking to the other hosts here. Stop listen. moving the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cradle you. <laughs> All right, so you're going to listen. Chachi? Yes, sir. He's ridiculous. No, I'm not talking to you, Chachi. Shut the fuck up. I'm talking to the listener. Matt Mike? I'm not even going to dignify him with a response. WrestleFan should be eliminated due to age. <laughs> Why, why did I thought you said AIDS? Shut up, Pretzel fan, shut up. <laughs> I'm talking to a listener. There's only one way. Turn his mic down. To go. Shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth. Shut your fucking mouth. You got your time. <laughs> one way to go, and that's Sorgatron. Sorgatron is a good vote, but no. <laughs> DJ Lunchbox is the path to redemption. DJ Lunchbox loves you very much. <laughs> and a vote for DJ Lunchbox is actually a vote for DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> also, I know where you live. <laughs> I have a rebuttal. Uh, <laughs> I have a rebuttal. Listen... It, this goes back to the whole uh, Mad Mike lying thing. How can you vote? How can you vote? Debate. How can you vote for a guy that doesn't even know his own fucking name? He changes his name and his titles every week. Chachi, all names are my name. A, a vote. A vote for DJ Lunchbox is advocating drug use. 
<laughs> and nobody wants to use drugs. Also, also, what is that light up panel in the background? <laughs> stop, stop. What is that light up panel in the background? Light up panel? There is a light up panel in the back of your room. There is a light up okay. panel in the back of your room. Hold on, hold on. You're talking about that? Yes. Yes. That is a candy machine from the 40s uh, that I threaded a blue Christmas rope light through. Okay? <laughs> so right. You're not going to vote for that. I made a droid. <laughs> From from the angle that it was at, it looked like some kind of like electronics panel with a bunch of switches in it because of the lights. I got confused. <laughs> wow! Wow! Uh, you can listen, wrestle fan, fan wrestle fan. Can do- listen, maximize maximize your vote. Vote DJ Lunchbox. It's also a vote for DJ Saucebox and Taco Man Salad. <laughs> Lady Poison. He doesn't even know who he is. Wrestle fan, <laughs> would you like to tell the people why to vote for you? Should I? Should I even try? Go for it. <laughs> yes, go to okay. yeah, it. Yeah, Sorg is gonna. Yeah, Sorg is gonna win. He's the only one being civil in this. Wrestle fan, <laughs> tell the people why they should vote for you. You should vote for me. Shut the fuck up, Junior. It would be a nice thing to do, and it would help my self esteem. <laughs> Oh, I hope his self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to vote for him now. <laughs> no, has to lose first to worst. Wait, he won he last won la- year. Yeah, he no, won last year. First to worst. worst, or worst to first, whatever the fuck. Hey Riz, do you want a campaign? I don't need the campaign. That's fucking right, you don't. I don't need the campaign for something I know I'm going to win. AJ's trying to get the Chachi vote. I can see that. And he, we, we hugged it out. But come on. I was fan of, I was new fan of the year last year. I'm going to win new, new whatever the hell this one is this year. And I'm going to go on and wait, wait, do wait, bigger wait, and better wait, things. I know what you're going after and you expect to win. Wheels, I'm going to push you off a ramp. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't be the first and you won't be the last. I'm going to win. Why? Because I'm the man that puts up the chachi month in and month out with his little goofy gnome on little corners or sitting beside me. But I love it because it's chachi. So a vote for chachi is a vote for me. I don't know what's going on anymore. What? I love everything that's happening. This is the best mayhem he's ever. <laughs> it's not even for another week. So go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, ladies and gentlemen. Shut vote your for mouth. your favorites of these crazy son of a bitches. Shut and it. And vote for your mayhemies of a 2000. You're probably going to win because you do all the counting. I swear, Russell fan, if you win, we kill you. I swear to God, I'm not winning. Actually, you know what? I gotta, yeah, I gotta no, give I'll it up to the, Bobby I'll and break, Lunchbox. I'll break the fourth wall. I'll break the fourth wall. I have one name. vote. Oh, sympathy, sympathy. <laughs> and wow. Guess what? It's not for Sword, me. You want to, you want, you want to say something? Sword, about no, me? no, don't do it. You're the only one being civil, man. Nothing to say. You're setting a great example. I have nothing to say because I have no voice anymore. So that's <laughs> that's that's all I got. I I have to so. give it up to Bobby and Lunchbox. Uh, their campaign name is Lunchtown. <laughs> yeah, nice. And that Vote is Vote Lunchtown. That is amazing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm winning. Do we want to talk about wrestling now? Yeah. Do we? Do, do, we were talking about wrestling. I tried wrestling. that ten minutes what ago. Happened, what happened in wrestling this week, guys? <laughs> I tried that ten minutes ago. <laughs> Is Sorg literally about to die on the- He's losing his voice. Sorg. Um, well, uh, Facebook bought Instagram. I'm pressed. That's the wrong show. <laughs> That's the wrong show, LB. You did that two For hours $1 ago. Billion dollars. Can you Rob's not that? here. That's the awesome cast where you guest host, and everybody should check that out at awesomecast.com. You should. Yeah. It's really good. You want it? And, well, what happened? Yeah. Okay, what happened? WWE is what losing money. Everybody forgot how to do the show. <laughs> I did not. Oh man, Wolf Rutherford. 
What? Shit the wolf. <laughs> my sister. What's your sister? Oh. It's my sister, yeah. This is very confusing. <laughs> I thought, I thought it's it was the cool. wolf. It's Sorry. someone very oh, different. Like Calm down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we had Raw uh, last I'm night. Really sorry, sister. We already Watch talked. I thought we, you were we, someone named the Wolf. <clears throat> we don't need to talk about uh, Brock Lesnar. We we had a plenty of he conversation about that because we talked about that last. Yes, week. we did. No, we talked about it earlier Earth. this week. Yeah. And this that was I know. We also so long talked ago. about how hot Vicky was. Yo, you oh, guys yeah. were all about that last night. Yeah. She's the best. So you. I heard you going. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, her duct tape d- dress was very appealing. What can I say? <laughs> okay. That's all I'm not say. even going to mention done. what my comment was because it just made Sorg just die laughing. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. What did I say? I can't it was something dealing with a whopper. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You said that. You yeah. Said oh, I found a combo and it's a whopper? What? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was something like that. I. Well, it's not funny in retrospect. He I guess found, we had to be there. He found a combo in his pants, and it's a whopper. Oh. Thank you, Chachi. Oh. Uh-oh. Cock and balls. balls. That's the combo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you like to piggy size that? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> don't need to. <laughs> What's that? So other, other things happen on Raw. What happened to the show? <laughs> Alberto Del Rio is a quivering flesh sack of joy, and I am so glad he's back. <laughs> a tan, quivering man flesh sack. I'm so happy to see Alberto Del Rio on my TV because he's a great Mexican wrestler who is not Rey Mysterio. <laughs> what about the Battle of Japan? <laughs> That, that was nice. can, can, can that was we pretty call awesome, it, actually. Can we call it that? The Battle of Japan? Yeah, yeah. why not? It was more like Hiroshima, but... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Y- wow. Yoshikatsu got bombed last night. <laughs> he didn't really back up his tweets. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, he, he got squashed. And speaking of squashing, Brodus Clay fell last night. Hmm? Brodus hmm? Clay got brought down last night. He fell. He didn't squash. He didn't squash anyone. Oh, he, yeah. He actually wrestled. Yeah, someone. he wrestled, and then someone brought him off his feet. But Dolph Ziggler is still one of those bouncy MFers. I'm telling you, he is I, I, made I, of I, I, like. I, what did we say last night? He's made of like a rubber ball. I know. I made the reference that Dolph Ziggler is the bouncy ball that you find at a Chinese buffet in one of those like quarter uh, machines. Why is it going to be yeah. Chinese? And that's where yeah, you, that's that's you right. find those uh, quarter machines with the bouncy balls in them. That's um, no, you can find them outside of any super store or shopping center. <laughs> I don't know. When I Just Chinese, quarter I machine and saved yourself a lot of trouble. Quarter machine at Bob Evans, bro. Mm-hmm. Bob <laughs> <Evans>. <laughs> there you go Don't episode 316 me. quarter machine at Bob Evans bro <laughs> 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 that is the show title that that's that, that's that's it I, I, it's beautiful it is beautiful <laughs> how long is the show so far <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> Uh, uh, let's what? see. Uh, at Don't least three it. and a half hours. Oh, no, no, that was the other show, too. I'm sorry. Anything it's been a while. All right, so Raw was subpar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody yeah. watch TNA? Nope. No, but I'm excited for TNA. Why? It does seem like they're on, they are, they are on an upswing. Let, the stuff that I've seen, I haven't watched, like, a full episode, but I've seen matches and, like, clips and stuff. It seems like they're on a real upswing. Okay, well, I'm going to be home on on Thursday, so sell me as to why I should watch TNA. Okay, well, one, from what I've seen, there's going to be a hilarious wedding between Eric Young and ODB, which actually looks really funny from the preview. Like, it looks, it looks like, you know, really hilarious stuff. I love what they're doing with Eric Young and ODB. It's, I don't know, it's, 
I don't know. It's just something really awesome. Um, they're doing apparently they're doing really good build up to the Bobby Roode James Storm match at Lockdown, which you know it's the main event. It's for what we say about TNA using older talent and stuff like that, and him having the problem with that. You know, they're, these two young guys that you know they're really letting shine here. They're really you know giving them the spotlight, giving them chance to you know do a lot. Um, even even the lethal even the whole Eric Bischoff and uh, and uh, his son thing it's turned a bit on an upswing because of the fact that it's going to be lethal lockdown and you know we have good wrestlers in that match and it's not just you know uh, Garrett Bischoff who we don't give a shit about um, so there, there's there's going to be good stuff there I heard there's some really good matches uh, this show um, so I'm I'm actually going to try to watch Impact this week I'm going to see I'm going to see how it goes. <laughs> and it is lead it is it is the the lead in two lockdown so and and lockdown it, it, it I think if there's any gauge to how TNA is doing like you should look at lockdown you should look at pound for glory because those are their WrestleMania and SummerSlams for whatever level you put them at right um and, 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 and that is the really Sunday good. so um we were talking I know we were talking before uh I think I was talking to LB at lunch today. Uh, like lockdown, I noticed is going to do the theater thing again, so I'm hoping to get the opportunity to go check that because there is one locally uh, over in Robinson. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, yeah. I mean it's fifteen dollars to do it, but like for seeing an event that's thirty five dollars on pay per view, it kind of makes sense. And it's an event; it's live. But, you know, I think a lot of those things, like when they did Jay and Bob, it was like fifteen dollars. Right. Um. So uh, Jay and Son and Bob uh, get old. For those who are wondering. Yeah. Um. Uh, but. It, decent matches and things. It's all in cages and everything. Who's on the team Bischoff team? Oh yeah, team Eric, team Garrett. Um, I believe you on uh, team Garrett, it's um, AJ Styles, uh, Mr. Anderson. Uh, I forgot who else. I don't. Is I. I think I'm guessing Garrett Bischoff's on there. I mean, they're, they're usually great cluster fucks for what they are. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean that's but, fu- that's fine. Yeah, but it looks it looks like really good stuff. I think um, um, on Bischoff's team, it's uh, Daniels, uh, Kazarian. Um, I'm trying to okay. think who else. So everybody else is because it's not listed very well here on the pay per view site. We, which no, is but not unusual uh, for TNA. And and the machine <clears throat> uh, the machine guns returned uh, this week on Impact, and they're going yes. for the tag titles. And they're, yeah, they're going for Samoa Joe Magnus. I'm looking forward to that match. That's going to uh, be really that's, good. That's going to be good. That's going to be one to, to buy the show for. I think. Uh, Hardy Angle in a cage, uh, the, the which may, which apparently may not happen since of Angle's injury. Now, what did he get? What what happened to Angle? I'm, I I I I don't remember. Torn exactly. hamstring. Is it? Torn hamstring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Hamstring. Um. So one that could jeopard. Obviously, that's going to jeopardize him for the Olympics and stuff like that. Um. But in a, so I don't know if they're going to do anything for lockdown. I mean. They already built up all the stuff because of the tapings and stuff like that. So, I wonder what's going to happen there. And if Angle can't wrestle, what are they going to do with Hardy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that'd be that'd be a rough one because that's kind of one of the bigger matches on the card. You know? Yeah, that's what's bad about like doing tapings for a pay per view. Yeah, I mean that's always the case. I mean WCW had the same problem. Did they have something where like? Like they they shot like like Sid Vicious with the belt for a couple of weeks in a row or, or somebody but he lost yeah. it and it got all goofed up like they, I remember reading about those in like some autobiography or something um, right but I don't know yeah that and of course we got James Thornton Rude like we mentioned before I mean I think it's going to be probably one of the better lockdowns they've had in a while I will say for all the shit we've given TNA. They have done amazing stuff with Bobby Roode. They have, they have. They've it's really been... given him the chance to shine. They don't just give a little and you know take it away. Yeah, yeah. They've they've given him the spotlight. They've given him an opportunity to be their top their top wrestler. Yeah, and he's really shining. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I don't, like I said, this is this is kind of like the watermark for the, where they're going. Like it, this, it, if there are times for you to check in. And see how TNA is doing. I, I say, you know, lockdown is one of those. You know, let's see what they're yeah. going up to. Let's see how they're doing. You know, because I, I mean, for whatever we've been burned by them, we still kind of hope TNA gets their shit together and picks up and becomes some sort of competition, right? 
Right. Oh, I mean, absolutely. just like just we talk, just like we talked about three hours ago, LB. We kind of wish that you know Android and Windows Phone would get their shit together, so there's competition for our nice iPhone, so they get even better, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah, same exactly, thing. Yeah, exactly. Because competition breeds brilliance. You exactly. Know? Exactly. There's somebody needs yeah. to have pressure. It'd be putting a pressure kicker for cooker for good shit to come out. And I, and I don't know like what's causing this upturn because it looks like they're they're pushing the younger talent, which is good. Yeah, they are. And I looked are. at the thing. Um, on team, uh, uh, on team Eric Bischoff, it's Bully Ray. On team Garrett Bischoff, Austin Aries. So they're you know, and mm-hmm. it's so they're doing stuff with like guys like Austin Aries and stuff like that, where they're not just an X division match that's thrown in. And that seems kind of nice because like then it's even if like I'm not sold on the whole Eric Garrett thing. Like I'm not a big fan of that part of it. But having all those guys in that mix makes it a more interesting match to me. You want to know why oh. you're not a fan of Eric Garrett? Because hmm. we Eric just Garrett? watched it. We, because we just watched the Stone Cold thing? No, because Wait. we just watched Lornitis versus, uh... Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's not a control... I don't know, it's... Uh, but there's a difference with this one, Chachi, not if you really. think about it. Not really. Well, no, well, no because honestly, the stupid, like, rule that they did with this one is if one loses, he doesn't get to wrestle anymore. The other one loses, he has to get rid of the Bischoff last name. No, that's what? stupid. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't know about that. Interesting. Interesting. Um, but either way, you know, it's interesting. Uh, and uh, like you said, I, I might see about the, the theater as an option this weekend if everything works out. Uh, the, if anybody gets, because like we've been talking about, like we had that big conversation last week about uh, online pay-per-views, and they, they do offer it over on uh, TNAondemand.com uh, if you want it. Like I, I think it's $35. Uh, I think that's comparable to what they're doing on pay-per-view on your cable providers, too. Um, and there's a list of, if you go to their website, of what theater is uh, potentially in your area. Uh, it, it definitely varies from state to state. It's, it's, I don't think it's even every state at this point. Uh, but it's 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 pretty out there, you know. And, and, and like like we were talking before, I'll be like, I really like this idea as, uh, you know, hearkening back to, like, where, how WrestleMania started in these, like, closed-captioned, or, or uh, closed circuit TV kind of situations in the theaters. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, because because uh, it was like it started before they had pay per view. Yeah, so they had to find some kind of public venue to put this out worldwide, and Vince was like, "Hey, and it, it, it's a return to that. It's maybe another opportunity for them to make money off of the thing." Because I mean, I you know, I, it's it you know the people that are that big of fans, they'll make more money off of by going and doing this. Rather than you mm-hmm. know ten of them holding up in a house and just putting down the thirty four ninety five or whatever you know and, and even just like I don't know if there's banners posters maybe up in these theaters that's 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 exposure for them too you know it always it always feels like TNA is like yes they're the underdog but it's like they it's like please get out there and make people learn about you and see that you're there because <laughs> how many times do you come across somebody who's like oh what's Kurt Angle doing now he's still wrestling really. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Stink too? What? I mean, that's the conversation you have with the general wrestling fan. You know, we know about it, but, you know, my, you know, grandmother-in-law that, you know, was a big, you know, watcher of Kurt Angle and all those guys. No, that has no idea, you know. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, you know. Um, all, all right. right. I, I think at that point, yep. let's go ahead and get out of here. On that note, it's uh, time so, to wrap up. I think I, uh, this week, the appropriate thing to do is to learn what you learned from the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Go ahead, Sork. Shit. <laughs> I was busy coming up with that presentation. How about you, Chachi? You got anything? Yes. Yes? Do not take any shit from authority figures. Okay. At all. If, all? A, if an authority figure comes up to you and says, hey, you, boy, do what I tell you. You give them the finger, you kick them in the gut, and you stun their asses right there. And tell me how you applied that in your day job. I don't. Oh, right. Because all right. I would get fired, and I need my day job. And you like your job. I do. Yeah. DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> Yo. What'd you learn from Stone Cold in your young life? Uh, bald is the way to go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Wrestle fan, what did you learn from the Stone Cold Steve Austin? I learned from Stone Cold Steve Austin is be yourself, but don't just be yourself. 
be an over exaggerated version of yourself. Because, you know, you can be your boring old, you know, stunning, you know, personality. That will get you anywhere. Just be yourself. See what he did you know? there? Yeah. Stunning personality. I see what he did there. <laughs> I saw what he did there. Riz, what'd you learn from Mr. Austin? I'm going to post this in the chat. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. You guys, no, you're not even in the chat. But the unfor- I learned that the Unforgiven 2001 uh, pic- poster is probably one of the scariest images of Steve Austin I have ever oh, seen. Oh, I was at that show. I know what you're talking about. And they had the, the, the video of his face just like getting contorted and... Oh, I re- yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me bring it up here. Uh, there it is. Especially never, ne- yeah, never <laughs> seen the pay per view buying uh, WWE uh, Shut Your Mouth, and that arena was in the game. And then yeah. you get to the arena, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, is yeah. That? And it's like it like vibrated, like the faces yeah. vibrated together, and it was like it was the creepiest it thing to look me at out when I was watching it. Yeah. Oh, well, did you were you there at the event, or did you watch it on pay per view? No, I think I had oh, that's something right, to do, but I didn't trust watch me. it on pay-per-view. It was even creepier in person. <laughs> <laughs> I went with Missy, and the whole time we're like, that is fucking... What the fuck? Yeah, that was messed up. <laughs> yeah. Messed up. You couldn't enjoy up. a show because you were creeped out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Wheels, what'd you learn from Mr. Austin? What did I learn? Don't piss off Steve Austin if you're in a wheelchair. Because he will what? you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> what? Uh, Bobby learned that bedpans are great comedy material mm-hmm. and that vehicles <laughs> in the WWE are awesome. That's right. That's why they did Crush Hour. Exactly. Uh, yes. Also, mm-hmm. I would like to point out that even an average Joe can carry the million dollar belt. Yeah. We know Virgil can. <laughs> Why does everything have to turn into a Virgil joke? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, why not, right? Virgil is a Virgil joke. (laughs) Excellent. Um, And uh, what did I learn? Uh, What did I learn? Yes, what did you learn? Um, No, I I got nothing, really. You got nothing? I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. You learned nothing nothing from Stone Cold Steve Austin? I learned absolutely nothing from Stone Cold Steve Austin other than what you guys said. Also. uh, Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. When you're stone cold, the ringside timekeeper is your best friend. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, that's something I learned, that uh, uh, lots of beer does not impede your, impede your judgment in the ring. No. Nope. <laughs> not at all. As, as you know, as opposed Ask to what... the Sandman. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 because I've seen the Sandman <laughs> impeded Sandman. in the ring. That, that was very obvious. He threatened... He- take- he, he almost sat on my head once. He, uh, he Was that the same night that he threatened to take his pants off? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that tag match with Raven. Uh, oh, yeah. That was, that was no, a rough night. That. Yeah, we were all there for that. <laughs> that was what I'll remember for that all the scary. wrong reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your and ours and our collective Wrestling Mayhem Show 316. 316! Break the glass! What? WrestlingMayhemShow.com <laughs> What? Twitter at Mayhem Show. What? <laughs> you can also contact us at Get yeah. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Or you can call us 412 206 WMS0. That's 9670. Remember, buy we're going to be by the app Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold in your uh, Amazon store and your uh, iTunes app store. I don't know why it's not on Google Play anymore. I, I, whatever. Nobody uses that Fuck crap, off. right? No. No? Really? No, no, really? no. You don't need it. You don't need it. There it is right there. Hey, guys, we're going to be all over Pittsburgh Comic Con in uh, less than two weeks. Go check it out up in Monroeville. Uh, we're going to have a booth there for Sorgatron Media. Uh, we're going to be selling IWC and RWA DVDs, so go check that out as well. Uh, we'll have some stuff up on the Lunchbox site with some details. Sign autographs when he's there. LB will be signing um, autographs. Riz will be around. Well, from three to six or seven, whenever on there Saturday. You go. Actually, LB's Probably taking over the booth pictures, on Saturday. You know. Yes, so, except sir, it's for be and Bobby FG Town's going to be there, and he still doesn't believe Bob, uh, Chachi's a real person because he hasn't met him yet because he's avoiding. <laughs> Twenty dollars a picture. 
<laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. Or if you want it signed. I am not covering the Comic-Con by day and then doing ringside camera by night. I, I can't do it. Where's your balls, man? And then uh, Sunday, Sunday, I have to go over to the Father Ryan's Art Center. If you want to touch Center. me, that's yes, a $10 right. Right. fee. So, you know, just, just, just keep that in mind. But we'll be no, out sir, there. Come touch by, say hi. Uh, our, booth, our booth will be right directly in front of the uh, women's bathroom. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, wow. uh, mm, what were you saying? It was like not the audience we were looking for. But the audience we deserve. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mayhem out! <laughs>